Governor Kathy Hochul says New York is now leading the way in cybersecurity. She announced today the state's new strategy, including a $600 million commitment to protect all New Yorkers from cyber threats, or at least try. Essentially, it boils down to connecting all different levels of government with funding to try to protect their systems, also looping in the private sector and nonprofits, and understanding how to keep up to date with evolving threats in this digital age. We're going to make sure that it's implemented, continue to enhance this, take our ideas from others, and people certainly in this audience have ideas for us, and we're going to keep bulking up our defenses against these attacks. And this is to protect infra critical infrastructure, but also personal information and our digital assets. This is based on three core values, unification, resilience, and preparedness. Another key component for the plan, though, calls for more education programs and training to bring information technology professionals, more of them, into the industry. Joining me live tonight with reaction to this is Alan Katerinsky, a clinical assistant professor of management science and systems with UB's School of Management. Professor, we really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us on this. And I know earlier this afternoon you said you really felt like this was a step toward connecting things that were maybe more isolated before. Absolutely. Just your top line reaction to what you read today. I think it's absolutely wonderful that they're going to fund underfunded parts of government because all these systems are connected and when an enemy attacks, they don't attack you where you're strong, they attack you where you're weak. Mm. So for underfunded places to get what they need in order to beef up their security is great. And as a New Yorker, I find that absolutely fascinating. I think it's, we're already ahead of a lot of other states in the first place because we have clear definitions of what businesses should do. Uh, Division of fin uh, Financial Services came out with goals and guidelines for cybersecurity about six years ago mm. and uh, anybody in financial services it's called DFS 500 um, and it's terrific and this leverages all of the stuff we've done so far and takes a good look at what we need to do and how we're going to do it. When it comes to a cyber attack, you just mentioned this, especially with something like critical infrastructure. Sure. Um, the, these criminals are oftentimes pretty smart, and they go after that weak link that you said. So, so is so much of the focus really here on making sure those weak links are as strong as they can be? Yes, and uh, not just uh, federal, county, city governments. I mean, the already New York City and Buffalo and uh, Albany, and I believe Syracuse, perhaps another one, are all working together in a consortium to mm -hmm. share cybersecurity information and uh, it's it's absolutely wonderful I think and this formalizes it and simplifies it and makes it easier to monitor and to assess where this program is going yeah and as you say this isn't just a, a government thing right the the private sector I mean every company out there um, it, as, as I think if they're smart preparing for when the cyber attack happens a lot of people think it's a matter of when not a matter of if you're going to get hit by a cyber attack Absolutely. Um, how important is it that it's not just you know governments leading the way on this right in terms of this specific thing but but looping in the private sector this is where government does its best thing it it's gives support for not only governmental systems but industry systems as well. There are uh, certain industries that are already getting lots of regulation in order for cybersecurity, financial, biotech, aerospace, these things that have strategic value in the world. But everything that ever does anything with a computer is vulnerable to attack because our research and development that we spend billions of dollars can be stolen in a cyber attack by a foreign power mm. and for pennies on the dollar they've got our research, our information, and our money. It's even changed how we prepare for something like war, right? It's Absolutely. not expected that the next big war is going to be fought with just soldiers on the ground, but it, it's in the, the cyber arena. Um, I've got about a minute left here. I sure. guess I would ask you, how, how worried are you about these cyber threats that just seem to be continually getting worse, or, or do you feel optimistic that we're preparing for it? We're preparing as best we can, and the school that I work for, UB, is terrific in its program of, of training new professionals. We probably have about half as many cybersecurity professionals as we need. It used to only be about a third, mm. but I'm a graduate of this program. I'm the first recipient of the Scholarship for Service from the National Science Foundation, wow. and um, there's cyber core of scholars that are going through all of these things, and now we're going into the high school programs, and we are creating 
a whole, cur uh, a whole generation of people who are cyber savvy. The thing we want to remember is you need to be urgently aware, all right? With a sense of urgency because everyone's at risk. It's not just a security guy's job. It's That's your right. job, too, because you're all yeah. at risk. You all got to be aware. No doubt about it. Uh, Professor Alan Katerinsky with UB, thanks so much for coming in and helping us understand uh, what happened today. And let's hope we're not the next victims of it. <laughs> Thank you.